White line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana. Trout line sitting on a pipeline Waiting for the sun to shine Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens That's how we live and it sure feels fine Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking My name's Rodney Dupree and today we got a neat show for y'all We're in Santa Ma at the VFW we got a jambalaya cook-off and a crackling cook-off, and all the money raised is going to something really cool, and we're going to talk a little further about that, but y'all hang on. We got some good jambalaya, we got some good music, we got some good cracklings, and Cajun Living and Cooking's fixing to start right about now. <laughs> all right, y'all, we done walked up out here and found Doug McCory. How's it going, Doug? How you doing there, Rodney? Doing good, doing good. You in both events? Yes, sir. You doing the jambalaya and the cracklings? Yes, sir. Tell me where you're at on the jumble out right now. It looks like it's crucial time. Yeah, just put the rice in, Rodney. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think it's got to be ready for 10, so we uh, want to go ahead and get that up. done. Get that done, and then uh, we'll concentrate a little more on the crackling. Gotcha. So what you did, you browned your meat, and you took it out? No. No, you left it in? Yeah. Okay. The next step, you come in and brought your onions in with it? That's correct. You brown that down? And the sausage. Then you put the sausage in there with it. You brown that down? That's right. Add it your right amount of water. That's right. Come back and brought it to a ball and put your rice in it. That's correct. So we caught back up with you now on the rice. Now what's the next step you're going to do here? Uh, I had a little bit. Well, cut the fire back a little bit and lit, put the lid on. Okay. Or let it go. How long are you going to let it sit with the lid on it? Uh, we generally go about 15 and 20. Okay. You'll turn it. Well, you saying 15, you'll, you'll flip it. And then uh, 20 more, is that what you say? Yeah. Okay. Not everybody knows how to cook a jambalaya. This is for those <laughs> folks out there that want to cook one. But that's the basic jambalaya 101 right there. And this is, uh, that's balling that rice. That's you trying to get that rice to pop. That's correct. A good jambalaya, a good jambalaya festival jambalaya, the rice pops. All right, Doug, now we're over to the crackling pot. Yep. Tell, me, tell me what we're doing now, what we got going. All right, so, you know, we rented the fat out and, uh, you know, now I'm just trying to cook them, finish them up. Okay. And uh, all the bubbles in there, that's mm -hmm. the water coming yeah, out? Right. That's the water moisture coming out. And uh, they probably got about another 20, 30 minutes and we'll take them out. What temperature are you at? Right now it's showing about 240. 240. Is mm -hmm. that where you want to be? Yeah, around there, 250, somewhere in there. Okay. So, and how long is that process? Well, we started this at 7 o'clock and it's 914 right now, so... So about two hours so far rendering down, right. just rendering, rendering. And, and you browning now too? No. No, the browning don't happen now. No, nope. that's gonna come later. Okay, so right, right now you're just trying to get all the fat off that's the crackling right. all the, right. and all the moisture out of there. Right. And, yep. and after that point, you pull yours out? Yes. And you do the ice or the water? We do the water. Water on it? Some, some people, I've seen people use vinegar, but I just think it puts a, a foul taste to them. If you, but I've seen people do vinegar. I've seen people do ice. Uh, I prefer just using the cold water. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, we burn the canopy down, we just get another. Yeah. But, well, yeah. Well, you can't ask for a better day. A front no, just came through out here. It's actually good, Rodney. That wind's not yeah, messing with y'all too bad? It's about a 10 mile an hour wind. No, I, I, not right now. Just check the phone. Yeah, but, but, uh, but no, Rodney, it's, uh, it's all going good. It's good. Uh, you got the cracklings pre cut. No, I did them myself. You cut them yourself? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Now, it's where the cracklings come from? Uh, got them in Gonzales. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. And uh, that's 60 pounds, huh? It was about a pound shy of 60. Oh, that? somebody needed some for bait or something. <laughs> yeah, it was about a pound shy of 60. What size pot is that? That's a 15 gallon. That's here. a 15? Right. So you can put 60 pounds oh, yeah. in a 15 gallon oh, yeah. pot. Yeah, it, it's going to shoot. As you cook them, they're going to go down, you know? Now, when you start, do you start with some oil in there? I start or some... with oil, Rodney. How much, yeah. you think? I put two gallons on it. Do you? Yeah. And then I'll take 
I'm gonna take a good bit of that out you gotcha. know, for the next process. You know. Now, now, when you take your all out, will you save that and use that for something later on? I got somebody that wants it. I'm gonna jug it up for when it cools. So. Gotcha. I hear that the hog lard that comes off of this is the best thing to fry right. your fish in. Now, when you finish up, it's no good. But right, you know, that uh, while you're popping them, that right, grease after there. This, after this first process is done, you know, there's a lot of people use that to fry turkeys, fish, chicken, whatever. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what started this back in the old days. That's right. That's how people got their lard for the year. They would they would render their cracklings down and get their fat. And uh, when they killed a hog, that's how they'd get their lard. Right. This is the time of the year they done it. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. All right, bro, I'm going to let right. you get back to it, and we're going to keep checking right. on you. Okay. We're going to uh, follow you throughout the day and uh, see how good all this comes out. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, y'all, I'm over here with Chad Corona, and he's got cracklings cooking, too. How you looking? What temperature are you at? Right at 245 right there. Okay, and that's where you want to be? Yeah, right now, yeah. Now, we was talking, uh, you've been cooking cracklings a while. You used to cook with Doug. Yeah, I was Doug's helper for a long time. Y'all won awards, huh? Yeah, won a boucherie in 2009. Gotcha. So he's like your mentor. Oh, yeah. Taught you how to do it. Yeah. So, uh, what what do you do? You know, when you render yours down, what do you do with your oil? You know, what I used to keep the first the first batch. I keep the oil. I cook with that, and once you blister them, it's burnt grease. Right. You can, you can uh, brown your pots with it after. That's all I do. Oh, is just throw yeah. my old pots. Yeah. Throw in some old rusty pots. Now, uh, do you use the ice too, or or do you use water? You use water. I use water at the end. Yeah. To so pop them yeah and uh what kind of seasoning do you go with whenever you season it up uh just salt on this one it's just salt competition yeah on this one yeah gotcha you can use gotcha. any kind of other I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, at the house i use a few different varieties but gotcha basically salt we uh i've seen some guys and we even done it before we took some cracklings and uh after you pulled them out from the popping we put some uh, ranch dressing seasoning oh, yeah. on them, you know, that the, the, good. the yeah, powdered anything. ranch. You can try anything. So, oh, yeah. yeah, the sky's the limit. You don't have oh, to use yeah. just salt. I guess for the competition to make it even. Yeah, that's what it is for, just for the competition. Gotcha. All right, so how long you think you need to, how long you going to uh, let it go? I'm probably going to go another, probably a popping right now, probably about another 20 minutes or better. Okay. I'm going to lay them out on the table and let them cool. Let them cool. All right, bro, we're going to yep. let you get back to it. All right, thank you. All right, Doug, this is the crucial point here. This is where you, what they call it? Well, I'm just bleeding it right now, Rod. Bleeding it out, yeah. Bleeding it out, put all the water in the bottom of the pot. Boy, that smells really good, really, really good. I don't want to get in the way while the bleeding's going on. <laughs> I might get bloody. <laughs> get all the bleeding going, and uh, so you don't necessarily stir it, y'all. You go down there, and you lifting the rice up, and you letting the water come down to the bottom. That's right. I'm right on that. And then you'll smooth it back out. And then how long you'll go from this point? 20, minutes. 20 more minutes. That's crucial time. We get it, we get it bleeded, we get it capped off, we get the lid back on it, and we got 20 more minutes. All right, y'all, I got a cook over here in the one bite challenge. Let me get your name and where you're from. Anna Alexis Gonzalez. Now what you cooking here? Pork sauce pecan. And in a little bitty pot. Little bitty pot. This is supposed to be a one bite contest, so we decided to go with the mini pot. This is the first time we've ever done this. And it's neat because I've never seen a sauce pecan cooked so little. Well, you might time for everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm really digging it though. Uh, usually you see the jambalaya cooked in the mini pots. Right, right. So this is going to be really unique to see how it comes out a sauce pecan on such a little scale. I mean, you only need like a little bit of onion, a little bit. Bit of pork. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. And it's a pork sauce pecan. Pork. Gotcha. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, Doug. You got them all out. Yes, sir. And the, and the whole reason for this is for them to cool, right? That's correct. Yes, sir. And you couldn't ask for a better day for this. That's a beautiful day. And and I hear them popping now. I hear them popping, and that's, right. the, that's the cool weather of them cooling off. Yeah, that's them cooling off, right. Okay. And then the next step, you're going to take most of this grease out. Take most of that. All out, yes, sir. Okay, and leave a little. And mm -hmm. what temperature are you gonna bring that up to? Uh, sm smoking. Oh, really? Four hundred ish. <laughs> gotcha. Smoking. Gotcha. And then you're gonna take small batches and throw them back in. Yes, sir. So we're gonna sort sort through them. We'll put them in boxes and 
you know, the fat. Gotcha. Making some crackling cornbread. Oh, yeah. So you want to do the big ones with the big ones? Is that how right. you, you talk? I'm going to sort through them and, you know. Okay. Okay. You know, just moving along to the next process That's though, correct. but this is the next process in the crackling. So right. getting your grease out and bringing it back up on a, a smaller scale and then letting them have it then with the water. That's right. All right, y'all, we're right. getting somewhere now. Hole in the Wall Seafood and Cajun Meats now has more to offer. The same high quality seafood, live and bald crawfish, crabs, sack oysters, frog legs, shrimp, gator meat, gore balls, and local catfish just to name a few. Now selling your favorite smokehouse products, homemade sausage and andouille, beef jerky, stuffed pork chops and chickens, fried boudin balls, cracklings, and much more. Now processing your deer and hogs. And come check out our new seating area. RP Custom Trailers and Service is a fully stocked store for RV parts and accessories. With essentials such as tank treatments, hoses, lenses, vents, power cords, cleaning supplies, and everything else your camper may need. Known for customized living quarters and horse trailers for over 18 years. We now specialize in RV insurance work. Talk to Ryan about how to prevent blowouts and oh yes, that leaky vinyl or rubber roof can be inspected and repaired also. Call or come by and see it all at RP Custom Trailers. Miss D Sweet Sensations is a wholesale sweet shop located in Santa Maria, Louisiana. The business is locally owned and operated by Diane Bro. Now with 12 delicious varieties to choose from. You can find Mrs. D's Sweet Sensations in all of your local supermarkets and convenience stores. Made fresh daily by six full-time employees right here in Ascension Parish. Hey, store owners, restaurants, and caterers, if you're not selling Mrs. D's Sweet Sensations, you're not selling the best product on the market. Alright y'all, I got Put, Balut, and Bonnie, and y'all seen them on the show before. These folks can cook some cracklings. This is a double batch, right? Yes, it is. We got 120 pounds. Wow. What size pot is this? 30. A, a oh, it's a 30? Yeah. And that's big enough to hold two cases of cracklings. Yep. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of cracklings. Oh, yes. Now, uh, y'all season them with just salt, I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah right here a, today, a, today is just salt. Now, what would you typically put, say you was cooking some cracklings at your house? Do you have a, uh, another we seasoning? Have a, yes, we have a secret seasoning that we make. And you can't tell nobody no, all the ingredients no, in there. No. But it's really good. Yes. Gotcha. Now, uh, will y'all use ice or will you use water or, 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 or do y'all just cook them all the way down? Ice. Ice? Mm -hmm. Okay. So once, you, once we take them out of here, then we're going to let them cool off and then... Uh, when we put them back and we're gonna fry them again and then we're gonna turn around and then uh, shock them with ice. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Now, uh, y'all save the lard? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It, it, Good it, fried turkeys. Fried turkeys, that's <laughs> yes. what I've been trying to get some recipes yes. for the lard that Good you take fried off. fried turkey, yes. They, they say frying fish in there or something yeah. too. Chicken. Yes, chicken, fish. Gotcha, gotcha, so you save that for yeah, and and that's like we said earlier. That's the history of this. This goes oh, yeah. back to when they used to kill a hog. That's how you got your lard. Yeah. Yes, my and, grandmother, my mom, and all them. That's what would be. That's why we so healthy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is fat free, y'all. Yeah. yeah. This is really fat, fat free. free yeah. You buy the crackling and you get the fat, fat free. free. Yeah. <laughs> all right, y'all. I'm gonna wish y'all good luck and uh, y'all keep up the good work. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, y'all. Now, when you're doing a lot of cooking, you got a cooking trailer. And this is really neat. It's got all the comforts of home. That oh, yes. You, you don't have to drag when y'all go into the cookouts and all. You don't have to drag yep. everything out yep. every time. Everything's in here. It's in the trailer. Yep. So you yep. keep all your cooking stuff. You got, you got air conditioning. Air conditioning and heating. Wow. Lights. We can put a air bed in there and go and do what we got to do. If you're waiting on the competition yep. or whatever, you can go sit in there in the yep. air conditioner, sit yep. back and relax. That's but uh, that's really neat, y'all, having yep. everything organized like this. Yes. So you don't pull it out your shed every time. You just got everything ready. Time to go cooking. Hook up. Let's go. Let's go. Roll on. Neat stuff, y'all. Yeah. All right, Doug. I always see the guys when they finish cooking sitting around doing this. What they call it? Cleaning the rice up? Yeah, I'm just getting my sample box ready, uh, Rodney, and 
just cleaning it up, make it, make I it gotcha. presentable, you know. Gotcha. And you looking for impurities in rice or any? Yeah, but it, any, still any. Look. They look just about evergreen. Yeah, I, open. you got it popped really, really nice, bro. And, I, and I, I'm not a jambalaya professional, but that's an awesome color, and it smells really good too. So I think you got something there, bro. Well, we hope so. Hope that they can, uh, you know, make them some money today. You know. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's key helping a. It's all for a good a, cause, you know. Yep. Yep. Real good cause. Well, uh, I'm gonna let you get back to work here. It's a crucial moment, picking out the good stuff and getting it ready for the judges. <laughs> All right, y'all, I got the commander of the VFW here, Brent Gotro. How's it going? It's really good, really good. Nice day. Well, we couldn't ask for a better one. Yeah. It's nice. You put in a good order. <laughs> it works. Sometimes we get what we ask for. Now, uh, this cook-off, how many years y'all been doing this? This is our second year for the fall cook-off. And, and, and we have jambalaya, we have mini pot jambalaya, we have crackling, and we have one bite challenge. Where, where does this money go? Okay, so we'll support all of the VFW programs that we have. Some of them we uh, will donate to uh, unmet, un unmet Needs, which provides uh, phone cards to service members that are deployed where they can call their family members back home. Yeah. Things of like that, a bunch of other of our programs. Gotcha. Yep. And 100% of that? I mean, uh, most all of it will go towards those programs. Gotcha. Yes. Maybe pay for some pans and pots Correct. and some grease that we needed to get or whatever. It. But all it. the money's going right back to a good cause. Yes, sir. Now, uh, the VFW does lots more stuff. We're going to have somebody else telling some, some of the other stuff that VFW does. Right. Yeah, we, we have a bingo every Friday and Saturday night. That's another fundraiser we do. Uh, we're part of the Veterans Parade every year, oh. uh, managing the parade. Uh, we uh, have members that are uh, part of the Veterans Park Committee and uh, also the Ascension Veterans Association. We have members involved in that, which put on uh, a musical tribute every year to uh, support the soldiers that are deployed down down the road. Gotcha, gotcha. And that's what we need more for the people out there fighting for this country where you can wake up and come out on a Saturday morning and come do something like this. You can't do this in other countries. So we need to take care of the people who's fighting for our country to be able to do this. Yes, sir. That's, that's what we're here for. Well, I want to thank you. Thank and you. keep up the good work on the cook-off. We're going to see who wins this well, here in a little coming bit. Coming up soon. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, y'all. I got one of the members of the VFW, Josh Schneider. How's it How going, doing? man? Good. How you doing? Doing good. How long you been with him here? Uh, I've been here for about seven years now. Wow. Tell us a little bit about the membership and how many people y'all have here. Uh, active. We have about 25 active members uh -huh. who uh, actively participate in the events that we hold. Um, that's within the VFW. Now, our, our Women's Auxiliary has probably probably another 20 members who oh, help wow. us with our bingos and, and they they're very active in in, uh, in helping out um, paid members who don't show up anymore because a lot of our memberships getting older some of them it's harder for them to get out here for our, for our meetings we're right around 200 people so 200 local folks in the area uh, all the way back to World War II so we have World wow. War II vets we actually still have World War II vets that call our bingo Neat. so Mr. Charlie calls our bingo and uh, he, he was in uh, in Germany in World War II Wow um, and let's tell a little bit about the bingo. Okay. It's uh, y'all have it twice a week. Twice a week. So Fridays and Saturdays. Um, all proceeds go to uh, to support local veterans. So um, we use that money to uh, sponsor the local uh, National Guard Hall off Irma Boulevard. Yeah. So y'all big sponsor for them. That's right. Uh, we try to help those guys out. They, uh, you know, uh, last couple of years has been a lot of deployments. So it's really stressful on the families. So we try to help out with the families, hold events for them, and and do things to support them. We also support a lot of our, our veterans in the area that are getting older. So we try to help out with uh, medical bills when we can uh, for our active members. Um, so we, we do a lot to, to try to boost up the Ascension Parish veterans. Awesome, awesome. Y'all, it's out here on Church Point Road. Bingo twice a week. That's one way you can be involved and give back. And when come to their cook-offs every year, and this looks like a pretty good event out here today. Oh yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. The weather held up nice. Yeah. Last one we had, we got some rain. Ooh, so it was rainy. We was hoping for uh, for a little bit better weather, and, and it's definitely not hot. Uh, but we're gonna try to get this kicked off. We're gonna try to hold quarterly events and get more uh, more awareness, get more people involved, and, and and have fun. I mean, that's why we're here. We're here to to support the the local uh, veterans and and to have fun. So awesome, bro. Y'all doing a fine job with it. Well, thank you, sir. And we fixing to find out who's the best cook. That's out right. Here. We're gonna find out who's the best cooks. We're about to try some of that crackling and some of that jambalaya. Yes, indeed. Y'all stay tuned. River Rats Bar and Grill, an oasis on the Amy River, located in French Settlement off Highway 16. Hashtag best place to eat and party. 
with amazingly delicious original and traditional food. Indoor and outdoor seating with a friendly and entertaining staff. Open seven days a week with happy hour Monday through Friday and game day specials. So come by car, bike, or boat. You won't forget the fun times you've had at River Rats Bar and Grill. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking is two unique stores in one. The hardware department has everything you need to fix stuff right. The outdoor cooking section cannot be beaten. We have all the latest and greatest gadgets on the market. But also, we keep a large stock of the tried and tested cookware we've all come to love over the years. Coffee and biscuits every morning during the week, cooking demos on Saturdays, and customer service that will help you get the job done. Junior's Meat Market has everything you need when you're going to the camp, tailgating, or planning dinner. We make our own cracklings, beef jerky, whole head cheese, and sausage right here in the store. We also process deer and hogs. Junior's Meat Market has an abundance of groceries and frozen items which include crab cakes, fried oysters, tilapia, and more. We have daily meat specials and we cook plate lunches every other weekend. Stop by Junior's Meat Market today and bring home dinner. This is a. This is a perfect. <laughs> this is the perfect. The gravy off the bottom. Or this is uh This is uh This is the winner. That's the winning jumbo line. Right winning right jumbo line. Look how hot that is. Uh, That's nice. Uh, huh? Hot dogs or jumbo hot dogs? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. That's good color. Beautiful. That's good rice. That's good. That's what you want your jumbo line to look like, y'all. Chili cooking. I like that. I like that. All right, y'all. We're in the judging room now, and they are uh, hard at it. This is hard job judging these uh, because I, looking at them, they all look really well. You can see that a couple of them didn't turn in meat, but uh, the colors look nice on most of them. And we can't tell who's who, and, and the judges don't know who's who. They just going by taste. Uh, this one turned in a lot of meat. That's how you bribe a judge. Well, maybe they was hiding the rice. It was a little bit, wasn't as dark maybe, but uh. They all looking good, looking really good, smelling good. Is uh, one jumping out at y'all, or is are they closed? Or you have a couple of them that jump out at you. You do, mm -hmm. you do. Yeah. Oh, uh, the colors all look just about the same. I see a little yeah. different colors, you know. I, I see a white one. There's a darker one, maybe right here, you know. And 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 what are you looking for in the color? Me. Something in between that. Paper bag. Paper bag color. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. And the rice. What are you looking for in that rice? I want it split like a mini hot dog bun. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and and the texture of it should be? I don't want it dry, but I don't want it gummy. When I um, take like this plate here, uh -huh. when I do this, ah. it's just falling off my spoon. That's what you want. It's right. It's not coming. It's not falling off. In gotcha. A exactly. Gotcha. So that would be greasy then. No. That it would be, be that would be a too much water. Oh. Like it's, it's gummy. Gotcha. Now, when it's too much grease, you're going to have a sheen to your rice. It's going to be shiny. Your spoon is going to be shiny. Ah, uh, you don't want a greasy jumble. And if jumbalot. you think that it has too much grease, then you make a hole in your plate. Oh, so you can look. Bottom. Gotcha. Gotcha. And see, is there any grease pooling down there or too much of a shine in your plate? But Gotcha. It's not. I hadn't come across any, really, that's got too much grease in it. Good. There's some good cooks, huh? Yeah. It's yeah. some good. It's something jumping out at you, Lane. That one in particular, or are, are they close? I mean, they're pretty tight. Are they? Mm -hmm. It looks like some really good cooks as I look at them. I don't see any rotel. That's exactly right. No jalapenos in there or anything. I'm very impressed with the size of the meat that's cut up because I don't like meat that's cut up tiny. No, like dog food. You no. want a good bite. I want a good bite. Gotcha. It's something jumping out at you. Uh, They're all pretty tight. I'm gotcha. Just, I'm learning from her how to judge. Right, so right. That's why I'm following right behind her. Gotcha. And y'all can talk about textures and, Correct. and, and she's different just things. She's showing me what she looks for since so she has so much experience. What's what's the flavor you're looking for? Are you looking for a certain flavor in it? I want a meat flavor, but I want to taste onions. I want to taste garlic. I want to taste salt, pepper. You know, I want to taste the rice. But I want all those flavors to mix in, and when I take that bite of jambalaya, I want to taste everything. Well, I can identify, you know. Gotcha. Got you. Don't want one everything. big hunk of celery flavor. Oh no, no, no. You don't want one big bell pepper no, flavor. No. You, you want to differentiate something. If, exactly. If you taste it and go, oh, I can taste bell pepper. Then that's bad. That's right. right. Gotcha. I want it to taste like jambalaya. Jambalaya. Jambala. Exactly. Y'all heard it from the judges right here, y'all. They got their work cut out for them. It's really neat. Uh how close they are so look these guys got it going on over here behind me now y'all y'all plating up to sell yes sir y'all are that smells good that's a good jumble right there oh yeah how many plates uh y'all estimated or y'all come up with some idea how many you think you might end up with hopefully uh, a lot a whole lot of plates where we can sell them and raise a bunch of money for the vfw y'all all right the judges are working they starting to plate them we're going to see who wins this here in a minute. All right, y'all, this is the winners right here. Everybody out here, give these folks a good hand right here. This is your cooks right here. Good job, y'all. Good cooking. Nice trophies, man. Good stuff. Good job. We're going to do it again next year, and we're going to raise some more money for the VFW. This is some good cooks right here, y'all. Some of the best Gonzales have, and they come from far away, too. So that's Cajun living and cooking right here. All right, y'all, it's been a great day here at the VFW, a good cause and some good cooks. And something I want to tell y'all out there, when you see your military, you go up and shake their hands and thank them. When you see your local police department, you go up there and you shake their hands and thank them. That's what's keeping this country free, y'all, things like that. But we can come out here and have a good time at the VFW. And I want to tell everybody, thank you for watching Cajun Living and Cooking. We'll catch you next week.